Hello, my name is Alexander Garvin. Thank you for taking time to listen to our presentation on walking speed, the sixth vital sign. Walking speed is increasingly becoming known as the sixth vital sign, as it is a powerful biomarker for health status and function that can identify patients at risk for falls and other adverse health events. Its use is supported by extensive evidence detailing how walking speed is a summary indicator of multiple physiologic inputs. Walking speed also meets care providers' eagerness for a scientific and objective basis to enhance their referral decisions because it enables clinicians to both quickly and safely assess if an individual can continue to safely live within their community or if they require intervention, thus supporting more timely and appropriate referrals. Given this wealth of evidence, we want to be at the forefront of a nationwide initiative to regularly measure walking speed in all veterans, to enhance the referral decision-making process of our healthcare providers, and in turn, improve veteran quality of life. Walking speed's informative power into health status and function can be seen in this illustration detailing how certain walking speeds are associated with different levels of independence and risks for adverse health events. For example, Older adults walking slower than 0.6 meters per second, what we consider our red flag group, are at the highest risk of adverse health events such as death, hospitalization, and falls. They also often live in long-term care facilities and require extensive additional assistance for activities of daily living. Older adults in our yellow flag group are walking between 0.6 and 1 meters per second. They're also at a high risk of things such as hospitalization or falls, and are often in assisted living facilities or have significant assistance at home. In our green flag group are the older adults walking fastest or greater than one meters per second. These individuals are less likely to have these adverse health events and are typically independent in their activities of daily living. This figure further illustrates walking speeds insights into health status by demonstrating how it is predictive of overall mortality. Within this figure, the lines in red represent the older adults walking the slowest, at less than 0.6 meters per second. The lines in yellow are the older adults walking between 0.6 and 1 meters per second. And the lines in green are older adults walking the fastest, at greater than 1 meters per second. Now, the separation between these lines is clear, representing differences in mortality. However, these differences in mortality between groups is particularly evident at the 8.5 year mark, wherein the older adults walking the slowest, at about 55 to 60% still alive within their group. Older adults walking 0.6 to 1 meters per second had about 70 to 82% still alive. And our older adults walking the fastest at greater than 1 meters per second had about 90 to 95% still alive. So this figure clearly demonstrates that walking speed is predictive of mortality and in turn informative of overall health status. Now it should be stated that this is looking at walking speed as a cross-sectional measure, but walking speed is actually a modifiable risk factor. And improving one's walking speed has been shown to improve their health status as well as elongate their livelihood. With the informative power of walking speed into older adults' health status and function, there are of course many applications of how walking speed can be utilized clinically. Specifically, walking speed measurement will allow you to proactively identify the need for referrals, Avoid costly and unanticipated referrals, such as community-based referrals or referrals to home health. Walking speed measurement will also allow you to align with large VA initiatives, such as the Whole Health Initiative or the Age-Friendly Initiative. Within the inpatient setting, walking speed measurement will allow you to predict post-operative recovery, inform length of stay, as well as predict hospital readmission. Along with walking speed utility within the clinical setting, it is important to note that it is also fast, easy, and safe to measure. Specifically, it requires no special equipment, little additional time, and adds no significant cost to an assessment. The few requirements that it does have are physical space, specifically a six meter walkway, typically found in a hallway within the clinic, some training, something that we are more than happy to collaborate on, as well as a stopwatch. To summarize, measuring walking speed provides insight into veterans' health status and function, identifies veterans at risk for falls and other adverse health events, can be implemented in the outpatient setting with few barriers, and will lead to more timely and appropriate referrals. Importantly, the value of walking speed is becoming widely recognized. There is an opportunity to be at the forefront of this initiative and make this facility a leader. We look forward to partnering with you to bring this capability to the VA.
To accomplish this, we hope to work with you to implement walking speed measurement into your clinic. Please feel free to contact myself, Alexander Garbin, Dr. Jennifer Stevens-Lapsley, or Dr. Sarah Beck at our emails below. Thank you.